It's a beautiful morning. Thanks for joining us once again on The Breakfast. Uh, we'll be going through the pages of national dailies. We have Chris Kane Day, who is the ED, African Governance and Leadership Initiative. It's good to have you join us this morning. Thank you for having me. Good morning. Good morning, Coffee. All right. Congratulations uh, once again. Uh, we start off with the Daily Independent newspaper, Operatives Accuse NSCDC of undermining election monitoring. And that's the board caption on the Daily Independent newspaper. Underneath your several reminders, as if we can run through it quickly. Say they paid for lodgings, others from their savings. NSCDC berates personnel for making complaints uh, public. Uh, that's two riders you find underneath. PDP leaders move to save Ayoch. Yochi Ayu ahead of the 2023 elections. No exams on Salah Day. Uh, Nico is quoted. And quickly, please rescue Italian Catholic priests. Kill three kidnappers in Edo. Uh, income tax returns. FIRS extends due date for companies. Six dead, 24 wounded in U.S. Independence Day parade shooting. Wow. Federal government replies U.S. senators denies claim that it violates religious freedom. And please begin the probe as INEC worries of attack on Inugo office. And that's it on the Daily Independent newspaper this morning. Let's move straight from the Daily Independent to uh, the Punch newspaper with these headlines. The big one there, 20 directors jostle to replace fired AGF. We'll be looking at that uh, in depth as we proceed on the program this morning. With the following writers to that headline, Anamekwe redeployed to FCSC as director, Secular seeks Idris's replacement, sacked AGF to face disciplinary committee after EFCC probe, says Anan, that's A-N-A-N. -A Worrying times uh, for the Buhar administration. Um, Einek laments as arsonists burn Inugu office and this picture uh, that's what the front page of the, the the punch goes with this morning as it's it's a front page picture uh, the uh, ruins of that INEC office right there in Enugu state INEC laments as arsonists burn Enugu office Lagos court remands woman for brutalizing 11 year old over 1000 naira kids rescued from Mondo church demand passes release Islamic cleric bags life imprisonment for dealing or defiling eight-year-old. Turcos get 30 days to resolve customers' complaints. 20 wrecks retire in August as tenor ends. Tenor will expire between now and August, as according to an INA commissioner. Or will massacre Akeridolu backs Matawale on self-defense. That should be the second governor uh, saying that. 1,039 clerics worship has killed, 394 kidnapped in 18 months. It's a report cited by The Punch. Solid mineral imports rise by 74% in 12 months. And final three stories from the paper. Bandits kidnap Kaduna priest, Edo police free Italian cleric. A traffic light, how policemen Lasma officers extort motorists in Lagos community, some will say a normal thing. It's been going on for quite some time. FG issues guidelines to retain all sector spending in Nigeria. Headlines coming in from The Punch. All right, away from The Punch, we have the leadership newspaper. And amid rising in security, stakeholders want security architecture decentralized. And that's the bold caption on the leadership underneath. Calls for removal of security from exclusive lists. Move will lead to chaos, uh, says former defense chief, indeed. States cannot cater for personnel. I mean, this is the argument that you have every other time. I will be squatted on that. Uh, states, local governments must ensure security of citizens. CSOs squatted and bandits kill four farmers, abduct, abduct Catholic priests in Sokoto and Kaduna, Knights condemn attacks on church priest. The writers you find under the, the bold caption, the leadership, you also have religious intolerance. Federal government caps U.S. senators over call to release Nigeria. 
Niger spends 11.8 trillion naira, 8.2 billion dollars on debt servicing in seven years. I mean, do the calculation. Ballot boxes destroyed as government raised Enugu INEC offers and Ukraine war federal government to absorb returnees student in to short universities. Uh, that's the much we can take this morning on the leadership. And we end things uh, with a look at uh, stories coming on the front page of the nation. Uh, the big one there, Wiki's camp gives IU must go condition to back Atiku. Wiki's camp gives IU must go condition to back Atiku. Stalemate as PDP candidate insists party chair will lead campaign. Party bigwigs to lobby Rivers governor for support. Why Tinubu will succeed, Buhari by Oshimuli. And another one there, APC indicts Rek Igini. Igini is the uh, resident electoral commissioner in Akwaibom State, uh, the same state where Gautila Pabio was not allowed um, to, uh, to find his way onto the, uh, the nomination list or the candidature list of his party. Let's go on. Uh, Ibman Federal Government Agency face-off to worsen petrol security. Ipman Federal Government Agency face off to worsen uh, petrol scarcity. We have more from that paper. Zenit Bank is Nigeria's best at World Finance Award. Uh, congratulations to them. Inside Ondo Believers Church, members fasting ahead of return of Jesus in September. Mm. My wife gave birth there four months ago and stayed back. Kids refuse to leave police station until pastor is released my 400 level student son left school moved there government to probe how people were indoctrinated and some parents didn't know their children were there i remember uh, uh some months ago maybe three months or two months some parent um, abroad you know was complaining about the child who uh who refused or some child abroad rather was complaining about the parent who had joined some strange um, uh, uh, group, you know, church, uh, you know, sect, and was uh, saying that the son should come back from America for the pastor or the command police to arrest him and all that. We have these things uh, sprinkling around the country. We'll, we'll leave it at that for now and uh, move over to our guest analyst who is joining us. Of course, uh, he's now known as the executive director, African Governance and Leadership Initiative, Chris Kainewando. Thank you very much. Uh, for your time. But I'm sure we, we, we know you're still a chartered uh, mediator and conciliator. That one is in the blood. Um, <laughs> yes, 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 you're welcome. Yes, yes. Thank you very much. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Let, let, you indeed. Let's start off with the, this um, very troubling one. Um, the Believer's Church in Ondo. Um, I'm sure you have seen and read about this story, seen the pictures and the videos of children being rescued from some sort of underground containment or something like that. It, it sounds really bizarre. It, it looks like a, a, a script from a movie, a very, very horrible movie, uh, talking about Jim Jones and the Guyana tragedy. Exactly. You took the words up and out, Kofi. I said we were, we were on the same plate and we are thinking together along the same line. Um, it's, it's quite dangerous. Um, one of the greatest problems we have in this country is the issue of rain. Uh, we are so dogmatic about it, and uh, easily get uh, uh, themselves uh, brainwashed to believe in it. And so many so-called men of God are taking advantage of the poverty in the land, as well as literacy level of uh, Nigerians to be able to uh, galvanize them to um, want them to do things uh, the ordinary they wouldn't want to do. And you know, the human nature and uh, uh, the way human beings think. Uh, if you have somebody that can give you some level of high argument than what you think you have, then there's a tendency for you to follow. So, and that is what the, these so called clergy men have been. It's not just only this one I've seen. There have been in the past, Kofi, you've seen, we had these clergy men who forced women, uh, forced them to certain places. Uh, go ahead to sleep with them, um, and just uh, under the pretext of uh, trying to cleanse them of evil things, um, they get some of their pregnant and the rest of them. So, um, it's, uh, it's quite unfortunate. I think this uh, should be well investigated. And if a so-called pastor 
Uh, I don't like the, uh, the word pastor for people like it because that diminishes um, the, the right of the genuine pastors. But if we find one thing, then it should be prosecuted and um, dealt with. And uh, you can imagine the children, as, according to reports, some of the children have said that they will not leave the place until uh, the money. That is because it's so brainwashed to believe that it may be their savior, uh, last home, and whatever. And then um, that's the situation find yourself. If tomorrow that man is able to wake up and wants them to die, all he just do is just miss uh, some kind of poison and give them, and all of them will drink and die. You know that you're talking about the film, uh, India Jones. It was a real life situation. It's not just, it was just made into a film, but it's a true life situation. It happened in the United States. And uh, so many members of that set were killed or died uh, through suicide. And it's not just a movie, it's not a movie thing, it's a real life situation. All right, Chris, um, let's also look at the leadership newspaper. It talks about stakeholders asking that the security architecture in the country is decentralized. And all, uh, you have several reactions. One of it is that, you know, former defense chief is saying it will actually cause a lot of confusion. Others are saying that, hey, um, you know, states do not have what it takes to take care of the personnel. I'm talking about uh, salaries and what have you. Are we, shouldn't we be thinking in this direction? Is it not time? And do you think that uh, decentralizing the security architecture would bring um, stability to our country? Yes, to a large extent, I think so. Um, um, there has been this cry that uh, we should have state police and uh, the way uh, the security architecture is centralized, it's, uh, uh, it, it is now is making it difficult for some of control. Um, I think we spoke about this uh, last week too, Messi. Uh, yes, I think we did. And the fact remains that even as the chief security, yes, I remember you asking me, uh, about um, the directive by the governor of uh, uh, which of the states you now that uh, Zafara state that asked these people to take up the from the government. The fact is that it is even if across the globe, security is centralized so that it helps so that the security will be very very close to the people. Uh, if you go to the United States, you have various levels of policing. At the local government, uh, what you call the counties, uh, to the state, and to the federal, each of them have their own policies, policing system. And that in itself helped a lot to be able to uh, checkmate the high level of insecurity uh, that could occur and what we're having now. Um, Kofi, uh, uh, Messi, last night I was one of the few uh, senior uh, media executives. And I had a one on one, a two hours one on one with the chief of um, army staff, Lieutenant General uh, Farouk Iyaya, um, truly uh, almost getting to the night. Over two hours, few of us invited and uh, sat down with him. And we asked him various uh, questions concerning the level of insecurity across Nigeria. And he gave his candid, very, very candid opinion on what is going on. To him, he believed that we are much better than we were, and then um, that of insecurity, which are attacked by notable elements like Aswa, uh, Boko Haram, um, is it, it, um, it's being reduced, it is reducing. And he also spoke about um, the killing and massacre that happened at Shiroro, Niger State, um, last week, where it was about 30 students uh, were killed. And you also went ahead to tell us that the military is doing everything possible to be able to make it. It does not in itself. We went as far as even discussing the issue of the, um, the passengers in that Abuja and Kuduna train are still uh, at the custody of, um, of um, some elements, uh, uh, terrorists. And they also said that something is being done about it. But part of what question is that the first remains that the way our security architecture is being run now it cannot work it definitely can work it will be very difficult for us to run this anything happens in Lego and need it you have to get the permit of army staff who also decide to get permission from the president who used to be able to military men and them governor uh 
low cannot just call out the military. Even the police, they can give the instruction um, to the commissioner of police. But before taking that, um, uh, that decision, the commissioner of police has to get across to the IDP who will not give him certain instruction. So, but they are called the chief security officers of the state. How are you a chief security officer if you cannot be able to give but certain instruction to the people to be there? Chris. So that is the problem for me. So, Chris, how come, you know, the constitutional review that we have has not conceded that? I mean, those who should be influencing or lobbying for a, a case like this decentralization of the security architecture have not actually made any move. I mean, how come? Uh, because it, it, it's a function of a constitutional review. And we've had, you know, uh, the process ongoing, but that's really not on the front burner. So why are we not having this on the front burner? No, um, during the constitutional review, I know that there are so many presentations to national by NGOs, by uh, civil society, and a lot of people on the need amendments of the constitution, especially when, uh, when it comes to the issue of um, state policing. And don't forget that most also have made attempts uh, and representation to the um, to the national assembly on issues like this. I know that there was a time that. The South, the South, uh, the Southern Governors Forum took a decision on this need to go, but the president was not for it. And I just want to know, I know what is happening. What is happening is it's just the selfishness on the part of our lawmakers. These people are not representing us; they are just representing themselves. Messi, we are much more interested in talking about Tinubu, Pramado, uh, that we uh, we participate in primaries. Um, and the rest of them, they are more interested in their own, what they, their self, selfish interests, what they will do. Other than the decision of that, uh, on the review, what, it has nothing to do, even the economy, I don't, I didn't see anything valuable. I think we uh, seem to have a disconnection issue with Chris right there. Uh, Talking about the need for us to decentralize the security architecture, I mean, the spin calls. And others are saying that, uh, you know, we cannot afford that because it's going to cause a lot of confusion. And others are saying, uh, when it comes to resources, uh, we don't have what it takes. But what the issue is, if we had a unitary um, structure of command, I mean, there's a unitary command structure that catered for, uh, you know, region and uh, mm -hmm. you know, government to take care of the situation, then why don't we return to it if that's but going to be the solution? But we, we were told, told that, that Chris we'll Kende Wando Wando is back. Uh, uh, Chris Kende Wando, thank you very much for your time and for joining us back. Uh, let's quickly move over to the nation newspaper uh, one more time. Um, uh, you've been in Abuja and you usually give us a feel of uh, the fuel supply situation in that part of the country. I mean, in other parts of the world, fuel supply wouldn't be uh, really like a subject for discussion or monitoring, but we have to do that. So I don't know what it, it is right, like right now in Abuja. The queues have disappeared. Maybe help us with that information. But uh, uh, one of the, the stories on the front page of the Punch newspaper, uh, the, the Nation newspaper happens to be uh, the face-up between the Independent Petroleum Marketers Association of Nigeria and a certain federal government agency, this time the um, successor of the DPR, which is a Nigerian Midstream and Downstream Petroleum Regulatory Authority, uh, who were given a baptism of fire with that um, dirty fuel saga that has not been addressed fully. Now we are being told that the scarcity of petrol may worsen unless the FG meets the demands of Ipman. Uh, both parties were told to meet in Abuja today uh, to deliberate on a strike option being muted by Ipman to drive home its demand for the payment of bridging gap. This is a translation claim uh, by Ipman. I remember last week, President Buhari or so, or maybe last uh, couple of weeks, had said that money had been released. Now, uh, the NMDPRA claims to have paid the market a 74 billion naira for it. And that's, that's what the paper is saying. Chris, over to you. Thank you for the first situation in Abuja. Um, I on a bit in that situation. Um, as we're talking, I'm not in Abuja. Uh, I'm in a worry now. Uh, for now. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, but uh, the situation in Abuja is not better. Um, that of Lagos, you know, is uh, is not much better. 
Those mm -hmm. large men, they say, and we've said, we've said this a week back, if you remember my tradition when uh, um, Messi and yourself uh, put, uh, put me on the spot and said that uh, uh, CKN, uh, yes, it's happening. I would pray that this wouldn't come to Lagos. Kofi, I give you some please, don't you see what will happen in Lagos. And it is to my prediction. <laughs> but to the back to question, the fact is that there's always a problem between the oil marketers and the various agencies of government um, that they would either uh, the of uh, petroleum or the the PR or uh, another agencies. But that is not even the because even if you solve this particular problem and you're able to pay them, I will tell you also for free that the next few weeks a month we'll still have much problem. Until we do what we ought to do. You cannot continue behaving. I just put your head on the it's like a sun and your whole body is exposed. Until we continue to do what we ought to do by making sure that we build refineries and we are not a hot dependent country. These issues will always come up. This government, I'm just tired of repeating myself like a broken record. 2015, they promised us the number of um, refineries that will be built. No single refinery has been built. And as what was said, so billions and billions now have been sunk into tunnel and maintenance of most of our old refineries. Nothing has happened. Now they are depending on uh, waiting on Dangote. They have invested into the Dangote, waiting on Dangote. Dangote promised to deliver. Uh, this refinery uh, in 2020 never happened. Uh, they moved in 2021, it never happened. This is 2022. So, uh, if Dangote decides to finish uh, the refinery, are we saying that we're not going to find a solution to our problem? That is the challenge for me. So, uh, it, but that is what you get when you have government, those in government who don't have the vision, who don't have the well with that. Who don't have the foresight to be able to do the right thing? We are talking about petroleum. Kofi, you tell me when last you have light in your house. I'm sure you run up uh, on generator. <laughs> you sent you with message and sent you with several Nigerians. Almost of people go for days and weeks without light. In fact, I said it here sometime ago. There is a place in Odo State, I think it's Okitukupa or something. Kofi, that we have not had light for 11 years. Go quote me anywhere because I've spoken to a lot of people in that place. They've called me to complain. They have not had light for over 11 years. Go in. And they are Nigerians. So, what are we talking about? The ones we had, the one that was inherited about 5,000. Uh, at the point, we have, if you continue to see the level of um, collapse of the national grid on a daily basis. So, it is a matter of leadership for me. It's not just about uh, what. It, these are not skyrocket uh, science. These are things that countries. These are countries have been doing and uh, and doing effectively. But the kind of we have, they don't even have the vision. Now they are campaigning again for us to vote for them. In. And vote, we will vote. We are asking for a radical change so that we can move the norms. So that we can get people that can be able to do the job. Kofi Messi, we have over two hundred million Nigerians, and so many of us. Can do this job, but what we have, we are stuck with these people with archaic idea that cannot be able to move us to the next. Chris, well, 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 Chris, we, 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 you, you, you'll be surprised that uh, <laughs> things might get better with power supply because I saw some pictures making the rounds. Uh, you know, the federal government in, instituting or uh, an presidential power initiative. Have you heard of it? PPI. Uh, they should have thought of something different, uh, Chris, uh, not, not not having two P's because Obasanjo had NI, um, what NIPP, and this is. Uh, uh, this is a PPI, yeah. so oh, I don't know. Yeah. Some some turbines or some mobile oh, transformers coming in from Siemens in Germany. Let's see if things will, will, will change. Well, uh, uh, the, um, Chris, we, we have to go now. Chris Kende, we, we have to let you go now. And to some extent, I think that Kofi might just be very sarcastic with that one right yes. there. Uh, well, thank you so much I, I for being part of the is talking about. Uh, Thank you for being part of the breakfast. We look forward to sharing your thoughts on the show as we proceed. You know, next week. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for having me. I have a wonderful day. I try to make sure I get well. <laughs> <laughs> Petrol in particular, because diesel is a bit uh, too expensive. Merci. I mean, I'm saying that the federal government 
um, shared some pictures of some meeting with some white guys. I think in Germany or somewhere, I think Siemens, one of those companies, and they are talking about the Presidential Power Initiative. They want to bring in mobile transformers. They want to bring in some other, you know, things. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and then we're hearing that uh, I don't know what I'm going to have light now that those things are coming in, but it's costing some good amount of U.S. dollars, you know. See how it goes. Well, we're, we're, we're just here to see how all of this unfolds and uh, all of this works out. Mm. Uh, that's the size of, of the press. When we return, we'll be looking at our first major conversation right here. Please stay with us.